my name is Heidi Finley, and I am doing something called paper marbling today. Paper marbling is a, a very old and traditional craft that comes from many different parts of the world. I think it's interesting because all those different parts of the world use slightly different materials and have, of course, different, different words for what they do. Um, what, what essentially I do is to decorate paper. Um, I make a painted pattern on the surface of this thickened water here, and then if I want, I use tools like this, or this comb here. This is called a rake, and I move the colors around and organize them into specific patterns like this. And then after I'm happy with the painting on the surface of the water, then I lower a sheet of paper down onto the surface of the water and pull it up and I have a one-of-a-kind original contact print. Okay, so I'll show you what, I'm, what I like to do. I have laid down my first color and that is black. I'm going to put just a little bit more on here and hopefully not get any on the camera. It's not much to look at just yet, but as we put more color on, you'll be able to see better. I have different, different color paints here. These are acrylic paints. And again, there are as many different ways to marble as there are marblers. So some artists will use watercolor, some use oil, some use ink. Now, this is the essence of marbling. What's happening is as the color touches the surface, it doesn't blend with, with the color that's already on the surface. It pushes, pushes it aside. And that is how, in the end, we have all, all of these beautiful little bits of pure, brilliant color. Nothing ever blends. It never gets muddy. Okay, maybe some yellow. Now it's starting to be something to look at. Now we can see it. it up. Maybe let's brighten it with some lavender. There, now we're getting somewhere. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Now you'll notice that the splatters aren't, uh, they're not spreading as much anymore. That's because the surface of the water has become saturated. So pretty soon, after probably one more color, I'm going to have to quit because if I keep putting paint on the surface, after it's saturated, the paint will sink. We don't want it to sink because then it can't touch the paper that we lay down on top. All right, so this will be my last color. It's nice, brilliant orange. Okay, that looks pretty nice just the way it is if I wanted to. I could lay my paper down there and print it just like that, and it would look something like either of these two over here, but we're, we're going to push it further. I'm going to use my stirring stick. And this this uh, this process draws out the color and sort of gets it all lined up and ready for these tools that you see over here. It makes it respond better to the tools when it's organized. And 
this takes a little while. Now there are no rules to marbling. When the kids do this, they don't ever do it as carefully as I'm doing it now. Um, kids get in there with the stick and they go in circles round and round and that's fine. Then you end up with an abstract looking pattern and that's fine too. Does anybody have any questions? It's beautiful. This particular pattern right here is called a Gelgit. And from this Gelgit, we can make lots of beautiful, traditional, very intricate patterns. Again, if I wanted to, I could lay my paper down right now and print it and it would be beautiful. But I'm going to use more tools. Okay, I'm going to use my comb. Like magic. One of the things I love about paper marbling is when you look at the end product, if you haven't seen the process, it, it just looks magical, I think. And then once you see the process, the magic is gone, but, uh, but you've been educated. All right, okay, this is looking really nice. This pattern that we have now is called the unknown peri. I think that's a French word, known peri. And from here, we can make all kinds of, of different patterns. I think I will keep it simple. I'm going to use my double rake. And I'm going to make what's called a peacock pattern. That's really cool. I like what he's doing. All right. Oh, yeah, that's a nice one. That one came out very nice. Okay, we got all our, well, we got a myriad of colors in there, and they all stayed very, very much separate. There's lots of contrast in there. All right, I'll get the paper. This probably takes a little... A little practice. Finesse. A little practice. Okay. And not too much caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Okay. Can I get you to hold that right there for us? Thank you. And drum roll, please. Here we go. Oh, lovely. Okay, we'll just let it drip for a second. Look at that. That's the best wow. one of the day. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh, how nice that is. That's a great wow. one. That's just awesome. All right. You would think like a computer did that. I know it. I know. Again, to see the end product without knowing how it's done, I, I think I just shook my head the first time I saw it. Thanks. Good job. All right. Now we rinse it, hang it up to dry. I saw this done at an outside fair, um, and I was immediately drawn 
to it. I made one myself, just like I now offer people the opportunity to make one themselves. And I could not walk away from the booth. I, I, was, I was hooked. And so I went home and sat down at my computer and did internet research. Um, I learned all I could, and then I ordered a kit. Um, and by trial and error, taught myself how, how to marble, and then I also took a workshop. Um, and, and I keep learning. Every time I do it, I, I learn more. Okay, where did this originate from? Did, did, I, did it, I hear that? It has originated um, from many different parts of the world. It's, it's unknown how much each part of the world knew about the other, um, because it, all, there are different materials used um, according to what was available in each part of the world.